Test. Oh, we are on. We have power. Man. Yeah, not not that I need this mic, boy. I, I'm ready to go without it, but no one can hear it online. And I want everybody watching online to be blessed tonight. A few announcements. Keep Brother Mike in prayer. Been an interesting time for us. Nobody lost faith. No one fell down unconscious. But hey, we learned some things, man. You get a friend sick that's seen a thousand people healed. We've seen hundreds of people healed, each one of us. And then Brother Mike's sick. I start one my prayer is like the fourth day. Uh Lord heal him. Uh I rebuke the demons. You start running, you start finding out how deep you are. Four, five, six, seven, eight days. And uh, he came in there not too bad. That Saturday wasn't too bad after the surgery. You know, it's the gallbladder wore out. You know, he's mid-60s. Things give out. You know, Mike wasn't saved till he was 40s. You know, you, you get, get some things eating and deteriorating. And you don't know about it. And so they took it out of there. Then one infection, two infections. Those hospitals, man. Whoo, man. I'll tell you what, man, you, you give me a good doctor that's working out of the back of his garage. <laughs> There's, I'm not afraid. That place, boy, that'll put the fear of God in you. It's a bunch of zombies walking around. A lot of those nurses, they're loving. Some hate that job. They don't like people anymore. People piss them off, push them over the edge. So we, got, we had to have somebody on all points bulletin. We don't know who's coming in here at night, what you're doing. We don't know if you're sleepy, if you're infected with a demon coming in here trying to give some other type of medication that would be counterreactive to what he's taking. It was, it was interesting times, but we, we stood together. Well, there's been a few things I, I realized. There's some ministries that the head guy dies. Those whole ministries crumble. They're over. And one good thing was, hey, Mike, Mike made the investment into numerous people to keep this thing going because ministries aren't supposed to be a, about one man. You know, one guy gets the anointing, gets the off the hook anointing, praise God. But this whole system of the one man church deal is not right. It's not biblical. And then what happens is people, people become man followers and you don't have this deep desperation for the Holy Ghost. See, when the Holy Ghost is moving amongst everybody and everybody gets their gifts and the gifts are given not to have validity for your ministry and who you are. Oh, he's the big shot. He's got it now. No, those gifts are given that they would edify and build up the church. So when the new believers come in, they say, wait a minute, you know, and I see it in the jails. You, know, wait, you see a sex offender get some gifts, you start realizing, hey, the gifts are given without reproach. Whatever you did in the past does not matter. He starts fresh when you proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. When you repent, he begins to give you new chances and new opportunities. And so you see the active area in those mega churches. It's, it's scary. I mean, if you try to talk to someone behind you, they, they got to go like, dude, you're, are you a psycho? Why are you talking to me? Hey, I'm just here like you to listen to the message. What do I got to do with your life, man? I, I can't loan you any money. There's, there's no, it, it, it's, a, it's a weird system. And then there's no accountability, there's no, real, there's no real love, there's no real getting to know each other, there's no real gifts given and knowing the people's problems. It's sad. It is a sad situation. And so then it becomes, who's got the greatest oratorial skills? Oh man, he can really preach. Man, I'll tell you, he'll mesmerize you with his biblical knowledge and his, his breakdown and the meat that he can pull out of the scriptures and... Well, man, let's throw a good band with it because there's already a few other good preachers. But, man, now we got to have the good band. And you got to sound like the secular Christian radio stations because that's what the people are used to listening to. You get into some real Holy Ghost worship, and they're like, where are you guys going with this, man? You've been singing this quite a long time. Uh, a little fanatical here. You know, come on, let's go four or five songs and get to the message here. This is how we do it at my church. Ah, see, it's a... It's a sin-stained world, and sin will creep in anywhere and everywhere. Whew. I had to watch it myself. My son's a senior. He's playing football. And back in the day, I knew guys that would pass up college scholarships. Like, I'm done. You know, I just had enough. We ain't doing that. I ain't got 50000 for college. I'm looking for, yeah, maybe 100 someone said. Could be 100000 So I've been investing a lot of workout time. Even got him a personal trainer. You got to humble yourself to get a personal trainer. You got to realize somebody knows more than you know. 
And I paid $400 for him. So I was hoping he knew a whole lot more than me. <laughs> and uh, so it's been a lot of highs and lows, man. They're one in three. One in three. Three losses. I've left there three weekends in a row on Friday going, oh, man, I can't wait to get back to the house of healing. I can't take this football stuff. <laughs> But football teaches you some stuff. It teaches you how to overcome. It teaches you how to persevere. You want something? So do all these people. What are you willing to do to separate yourself from those people? What are you willing to do that they're not willing to do so you can get on that field and do something they can't do? So it teaches you a lot. My brother played football at University of Nebraska. And he was there uh, in 93 as a freshman. And they went down to Florida, and they actually won the national title. But Toby Wright, they didn't have replay back then. They gave Florida State the touchdown, but Toby Wright from uh, Dobson High School came back, came in from being the a safety and jammed them about a yard short. But they didn't have replay, and some ref threw up the touchdown. So my son, my brother was, uh, they were Big Eight championship, went down to the bowl game, and he fails out. Nebraska went on to win two national titles. Each one of those rings is worth 15 or 20 grand on eBay. You ever gotten a jam? Had your two rings, you could just let them go. Get that down payment on a house. Get, a, get, get yourself a little Nissan Altima, get back in the game and have some wheels. But God had a plan for him. And he came down here to junior college and he did everything he could do, made all conference, all American, everything you could make. And the only school wants him, he's an offensive lineman is New Mexico State. We didn't have a lot of money for food. And uh, they said, well, we don't want you for O-line. We want you to play defense. That, that's strange in college. But he ran like a 4 6 40. That's unheard of. And uh, anyway, he totally loses his interest in football. Some brothers from Athletes in Action lead him to Christ. And he graduates with a 3.85 GPA, was vala cum laude, never got a B after football was over was only A's for the next year and a half, and the school gave him another year full scholarship because he was doing so good, even though his playing time was over. So he had favor with football, though his football career went nowhere. God allowed that football situation to teach him, what do you want to do? You know, he could have he went crazy with football and went and played in the arena league and beat his body all up, and he said, no, I see the vision now, that this is an opportunity to get an education. And uh, so sports are good, but, man, they can really creep up on you. A lot of lessons. I had a guy, this is no joke, you can look him up on the Internet, his name's Jason Kyle, I'm playing at Arizona State University. He's a walk-on, he's a four-string defensive end, and they gave the walk-on scholarships out, and he wasn't one of them. And he said, I'm quitting, man, I'm going home, I'm done, I'm quitting. I said, oh, man, don't quit, man, you're playing special teams you know, you're going to get on the field. Man, you're only a sophomore. Keep going. Guy ends up playing in the NFL for 16 years. Get this. He only played as a backup at linebacker for two years, and he was a long snapper for 14. Never even got a concussion. Never missed a game. He was long snapping for a million dollars a year for the league minimum his 16th year. And he was going to quit. Ah, oh, see, we can't quit. You're down right now. Things ain't looking good. You're four string in the family. <laughs> the money's low. Your ministry can't get out the ground. You get to trying to preach and you get tongue tied. Can't you, you can find confused with the, with the scriptures. You don't know where to go. But I'm telling you, I'm going to explain in the scriptures that there's power in the Holy Ghost. And what God has to do is He's got to whittle you down until you realize you can't do it. And that you need him. So you can only go so far in Christianity. And then you're going to veer off either the following man, trusting in yourself, or you're going to press on. And the only way you press on is through the power of the Holy Spirit. Right. Right. Amen. So many of us come in and we're sick, we're depressed, we're broke, we're confused. We can't stop sinning. And you don't do anything for the Lord. Well, I'm telling you, you get these spirits out. And let me tell you, this thing just starts working. This thing just starts moving. Divine opportunities just start happening on a regular basis. But see, when you get into the movement of the Holy Spirit, that's when this whole thing separates. And I was, we couldn't get the audio working. I was thinking, hey, man, if they don't have this thing going, I'm going to rip if we're not filmed on YouTube. 
<laughs> but we all know there was an apostate church. And it was to be a mimicker. Oh, it was so close. They even talked Bible. You couldn't have the Bible, but they talked about They had the Bible. You couldn't have it. And then what was the difference? They looked the same. They even had more magnificent buildings. They even ruled by force. If you didn't worship here, we'll kill you. This is where you worship. But the true church had the Holy Ghost. The true church had the power. And that's what we're looking for, some Holy Ghost power. You don't have this in your own ability. You can't, you can't make this stuff up. This is a gift that's given from God to man. And you only get it when you want it, when you desire it. God will save anybody and everybody like you can't believe. I mean, people half there, whacked out on drugs for 20. I'll believe in Jesus. They'll get saved. But what, does everybody get the Holy Spirit? Absolutely not. There's, a, there's the power that comes. And I'm going to show you how you get the power. It's clear in Scripture. See, when the Holy Spirit starts moving, the devil's got to oppose it. I've seen so many supernatural things. When I've been anointed in my prayer time and the presence of God is on me, he literally will shut jails down. I'm not making this stuff up. Two, three in a row. In a, shut bomb threats. Uh, some kind of security override. Three in a row where guys are amazed. And it's always right when I get up to preach. <laughs> You can't believe this stuff. And what's he trying to do? Quench the Holy Spirit. He's banking on me, fizzling out. He's, he's, he's banking on me, getting entrapped by the things of the world. He's banking on me, taking offense of somebody who don't like me the way I preach or something I said that was wrong or out of context. Because everybody's fallible, and that devil will make sure he points out your failures. That's what he does to try to get you to shrink and draw back. He, oh, he sent chaplains on me. I've had this chaplain jump me. Like I was late five times at school in the third grade. She jumped me. I was 10 minutes late, but you're still 20 minutes early from the, from the time. You have to call for the guys. You got to be there 30 minutes early. And she jumps me like I'm a kid in the third grade. And I'm just sitting there going, wow, I wonder if she knows these are demons. <laughs> they will rise up. When you got the anointing, they will oppose you. I'll show you in Scripture your many churches are not opposed by the devil because the kingdom of God is like a seed. If you're not a deep person, if you've never, you can only go so deep unless you're walking with the Holy Ghost. And that devil just comes when it's on that shallow ground on the stones and he snatches it. He steals the word which was sown in their heart and they can't even remember it come Wednesday. Going through the same ritual routine. Getting down, getting depressed. Oh, man, I got to get to church. I got to get myself back up. Oh, I need to get on that prayer list. Oh, I need my breakthrough. Oh, man, this, this, this devil's no joke. Me and Steve had a guy. This is no joke. He was sneaking into the jails to preach right after we preached. He was a Seventh-day Adventist. I love you if you're Seventh-day Adventist, but more, my goodness, you... you Go ahead and scratch all the LNG white and run with whatever, whatever else you got there and you're going to be fine. But legalism runs amok. Runs, you got to do this. You got to do that. Oh, that's not God. Oh, he was coming just to try to unwind Holy Spirit messages and now he's out forever. He was essentially coming in at an unassigned time and Steve had called him out. Me and Steve going together on Mondays. He said, hey, how is it that you never sign in and you never sign out? Go, Don't worry about me. I got it. And we're like, what is it? He's taking a risk here. Sure enough, he wasn't even assigned. Why? Because the devil has his minister. Does this guy, am I saying he's not saved? I wouldn't dare say that. I, I, don't, I don't know if you, you know, I believe he was a saved guy. He was just infected with demons. I'll show you in the scripture, someone who gets saved and is infected with demons and freaks when the Holy Spirit shows up. I'll show you right here. I'm not making this stuff up. God's going to back me up. That's where I got it from God. So that's where I learned it. So we see that Jesus, when he was just preaching, they liked him in the synagogue. He was growing in knowledge. He was growing in stature. He was growing in favor with men. He was growing. In the, where did this kid get so much wisdom? How, man, he's great at breaking open the scrolls and expounding upon the scriptures. No problems. The problem is when he gets the Holy Ghost in full measure, and he's driven out into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He's tempted for 40 days, 40 nights with no food and no drink. Oh, now see... 
No, no servant is above his master. It's enough that he's like his master. Most Christians haven't even shut their face. Oh, I'm going to fast. I'm not eating any sweets. <laughs> he doesn't eat or drink for 40 days. The devil has hammered him. Jesus says, hey, let me, let me just let you record these three things. There's not just three things. He understands we only got two and a half inches to put in the scripture here. They were so severe, the angels of God had to come and minister to him. But when he comes out, he comes out with all power and authority. You might have been baptized in the Holy Ghost, praying in tongues, but you've never passed the test of overcoming the devil. Well, I don't know if it's the devil. I just got a bunch of bad neighbors and a bunch of bad family. It's not really the devil. I'm just depressed. I mean, if I get over this, I'll pass test. Come on, man. This devil's blinding your mind to the reality that you're living in. There's guys that come in here. Smart guys. Had all these encounters with God. Someone called me and says, you need to pray for him. He's living in the park. He's living in the park. This is a good looking guy. Handsome guy. Articulate guy. He's living in the park. Why? He won't stop grumbling and complaining. He, he can't understand that when you're going to go somewhere, God sometimes got to break you all the way down. And he goes back and he takes you to a place where you thought life was just great. You were serving God, you were making money, you had friends, you had influence, you were taking vacations, you were storing up money in the bank in case things got bad, you had it all. Now why would this have to come? And he drags you to the past of what you used to be. Oh, see, so many people when we get to glory, I, I don't know how the Lord is going to do it, there's no sorrow, there's no pain in, in glory. Somehow he's got to just be able to remove all this so we don't think about it, but people are at the doorstep of opportunity and breakthrough, but they don't know how to fight all the way through. Some of them don't know how to fight at all because they're not fighting the devil. They're fighting themselves. Come on, man. That devil's smart. He's got the nation fighting itself. They want to bring up everything from the past. We want to give 40 acres and a mule and the Native Americans get their land back and the Hispanics in Mexico gets their land back and, and you people get back here and you now go to the front because you didn't have it then. It's in chaos. And no one's giving up nothing, so all they're doing is, is marching on the battlegrounds of a fight. Christians losing their minds. You know what? There was this prophecy that that Donald Trump is like this Old Testament guy and risen up by God. Are you that stupid? He's hired all the Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs runs the world. Goldman Sachs will kill human beings for money, shorting food. And they'd do it with water if they could. Who's his appointee? The military. Oh, no, these are patriot military people. You're in the military. And you got some kills under your belt? You, you've dropped some bombs? 10% of the killings in America in the last 20 years have been people that aren't even involved in a war. They don't even know a war's going on until their neighborhoods are blown up, until a bomb comes down from Hiroshima, and you were just working in the rice paddies. You're going to put your faith and trust in a nation? Jesus Christ himself says, if my kingdom was of this world, my people would fight. His kingdom's not of this world. You ain't fighting in the U.S. military for the United States, for Jesus Christ. Now, they came to John the Baptist and there were soldiers and said, hey, what should we do? Should we quit? He said, no, you don't need to quit. Just stop extorting people. Be content with your wages. You can be a Christian in any, in any situation. Should we uh, tell people that you should not kill kids? Oh, yeah, you got to tell people you cannot commit murder. I, I was... Uh, had a friend, he had four abortions. He was taking his, his, these girls there, and all I knew was it cost 320 bucks. And my only story to talk about was, well, who's paying for this one? And I would kind of go, oh, wow, that's costing you the 320. She's not splitting it. I had no idea. You can't leave people in deception. You got to let people know that life begins in the womb. The minute the seed hits the egg, Damn, life is conceived and God knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. That means he knows you when the seed hits the egg. 
Yeah, you got to protect the innocent. You want to see a sinner rise up for justice? They hate sex offenders. Sex offenders got to be on their own floor. They got to be baptized on their own day. They can't, they can't go into the medical area unless they're by themselves with tw twice as many guards as the regular population because people hate people that get kids. And they don't even realize that 90% of all the sex offenders never touch the kid. They just, rem you did a kid. Kids! It's innocent. Protect the innocent. So yeah, we got we to gotta stand up for what's right. I'm not saying that. But you can't get your walk with God and be fighting your friends over political things. Are you out of your mind? You're trying to win people for Christ. He who wins souls is wise. You can't show someone... Uh, the right way by showing them all the wrong way. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. Did the demons just stir up? My favorite one that got stirred up was Ignacio with Jack Black and Nacho Libre, and he was trying to get him baptized. And he'd flare up. I believe in science. He'd trigger. So they trigger when Jesus gets the man's hand healed when he comes out of the wilderness and he restores a man's hand. And the demons that are in the religious leaders at that time, oh, they were a brood of vipers. John called them brood of vipers. I talked about it two months ago when I was here. Jesus called them brood of vipers. And the minute the hand's healed, they trigger. And what do they go to? Their religion. What are you doing, man? This is the Sabbath. We honor God on the Sabbath. Not that healing a hand honors God or anything, you know. Not like God didn't come down and do that. Uh, you know, you could have six days to take care of that business. Not today. They trigger. Oh, see, the devil's always going to trigger. See, John the Baptist, they triggered on him. They're coming out. What, what, what is this, man? People aren't in a synagogue. Hey, I, I'm losing a little bit of clout here, man. People are normally lining up, looking for information for me, dropping off tithes and offerings to me. They're all out there at the River Jordan, and they go out to take a look. They don't go out to repent. Right. You know, what are you doing out here? Who told you to flee from the wrath to come, you brood of vipers? Oh, man, they're not listening. Oh, they weren't listening. They freak. They wanted to kill God. They wanted to kill Jesus. They knew he was God. They wanted to kill him. Stephen. Oh, man. We're going to talk about him. We're going to talk about him. So there's a fight going on. Church fight. Good church folk. Born again Christians. It's the Hellenists and the, and the, and the Hebrews. The Hellenists were the Jews that spoke uh, Greek. And uh, they're saying, hey, wait a minute, man. You know, uh, look, our widows, man, we're getting those little wafers over here, man. I've seen some loaf of breads over there. You know, we're, we're getting shorted. And the disciples come to their senses and they say, hey, it's not good for us disciples to leave the ministry and leave prayer to be waiting on tables. You know what? We need to appoint seven men for this ministry, but there's going to be some qualifications. So any ministry you have, there has to be some qualifications. Number one, you've got to have a good reputation. I know a couple people with some nice Holy Spirit gifts that don't have good reputations. Everybody will acknowledge their gift, but they'll say that character is a little bit shady. you got to have a good reputation. How do you get a good reputation? Uh, you care about people? You help people? Oh, now those are rare now. I've been to the megachurch. But I was born again, and I was spirit-filled in the megachurch, and I could spot disciples. They stood out. I probably could have countered them in a huge megachurch on two hands. But they had disciples in there. And you know what they were doing? Serving people. Loving people. They had the qualifications of a minister. you got to be in good standing with the church. And you got to be full of the Holy Spirit. you got to be full of wisdom. Or you're not qualified. you got to keep learning. You got to keep getting discipled. You got to keep going through deliverance. You got to keep fasting. You got to keep getting hungry for the Holy Spirit to come upon you. But if you go out and you don't have these things, come on, man. You can go visit a couple of these places on Sunday. They're open. They start at 9, 10, 11. Uh, some of them even run at 1.30. They even might even have an evening service. Go check them out. 
These people did not, they, they probably had the good reputation. They weren't full of the Holy Spirit and full of wisdom. So he gets full of the Holy Spirit and, and full of wisdom. And two of these guys are Stephen and Philip. We're going to take a look at them. But watch what happens. Then once they appoint these men to take care of the distribution of food, they got more time. When you serve a ministry, it gives the minister some more time to do what he's been called to do. And this is exactly what happens in verse 7. Then the word of God spread and the number of the disciples greatly multiplied in Jerusalem. And great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. It's not just you coming over doing some simple uh, job. It's you freeing up some time for somebody who's already operating in the gift. Now, I don't think you should have to take over another, uh, you know, there, there, there's things that are, they'll, they'll, they'll work you. And they'll, they'll manipulate you at some places. You have to have discernment. You have to have discernment. But these guys are serving Stephen and Philip under ministers who have a proven track record. And the result is well, they're freed up and they bear more, more fruit for the Lord. Now watch this. These guys are waiting on tables, but then we go to Acts chapter 6, verse 8. And it says, now Stephen's full of faith and now power. Oh, did you hear that? I said at least got one, amen. amen. Power? There's Holy Spirit power. There's power to drive out demons. There's power to do supernatural things to go on above and beyond what you think you can do. There's, there's power to go ahead and, and preach three services uh, in the jail when you worked 10 hours in the day in the heat and go in there and come out uh, more rested than when you came in. Oh, there's some Holy Spirit power to do some stuff. There's some, there's some Holy Spirit power to sit in some office and meet some people that are uh, in a lot of trouble. And sometimes it can be very taxing. You better have something above yourself when you're called to minister because it's a ministry of service and helps. So he comes out with all faith and all power and he's doing great wonders and signs among the people. And now what happens? Religious people freak on him. And they're coming to him and they're disputing with him. Some Christians can't have demons. Well, he can't be in darkness. Well, dude, how come you ain't got rid of your twitch when you say that? <laughs> you bless them. You got to bless them. You got to know when to, you got to know when to, uh, I think that's a Kenny Rogers song, not a, not a biblical text, but you got to know when to walk away and know when to run. <laughs> You can't please everybody, and you're not called to be around everybody. There's some people that I, I won't. It says don't cast your pearls to swine. At least they come and trample them under your feet. So that you got to use discernment. Punch you? That's the time to run. When they get, when they get physical, that's time to bounce. Yeah, it's time to go. Anybody, anybody attacks you verbally, that relationship, I mean, you can handle verbal attacks. The minute it becomes physical, you just got to go. Oh, spirits. You're talking to the spirits and spirits are punching you? I'm glad you're here. We're going we're gonna to have an altar call time. We can get those out. We can get those out. Yeah, they're, they're encroaching on your freedom and uh, the blessings that are available to the New Testament believer, which is power over demons. And freedom to be set free and, and being loose from the chains of bondage. So we'll get to that here right after the message. So he's moving in signs, wonders, and miracles. And now these people come at him and they freak. And they're coming at him with all these texts. But they can't resist him because he's speaking in wisdom and by the Spirit. Oh, see? See, a rookie has to argue somebody about deliverance. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. That's a bold statement. Somebody says, oh, that's heresy. No, he's saying, look, I'm doing this thing. I've been set free. You want to see how someone free walks and the religious person, you've seen them all your life. Come and walk with me and see how we do it. God's with me. He'll never leave me and never forsake me. He backs me up every time I preach with signs, wonders, and miracles. Uh, we're going out today, and we're going to get somebody healed and delivered. We're going to bring the good news to somebody that they can understand and be saved. So there's power. He's working in it. Now watch. 
he goes on and then he breaks down the gospel like you can't believe from Abraham all the way down to the resurrection and to them crucifying Jesus and he calls them out for it. You crucified him, you killed him, you shed the innocent blood. And it says when they heard these things, they're cut to the heart and they totally go demonic now. They gnash their teeth. They're grinding their teeth. He's full of the Holy Spirit. He saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. He said, look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. And they cried out with a loud voice and they stopped their ears. That's full on demonic. Come on, you can only check that, those type of behaviors out down by Cass. <laughs> ah, can you? This is what these religious people that are doing. They're grinding their teeth going full demonic. And what do they do? They ran at him with one accord. And they stoned him. They drug him out to the end of the city. And they killed him. Come on now. We've been living in the lap of luxury for years in America. As the heat gets turned up, in the latter days, the Lord talks about him pouring out his spirit, that there'll always be his remnant. But let me tell you, the lukewarm are going to go cold. They're going to get cold. They're going to get hard. And it's going to be nasty. And if you think you can't take what you're dealing with now, you ain't no way are going to be able to take what's happening in the next decade or two. I don't know the times and the dates, but I can see the signs. It's coming. The whole world's going broke. Amen. Turkey, Venezuela's been broke. Takes a wheelbarrow to go grocery shopping with cash. It's worth nothing. Egypt's going broke. Interest rates are going up everywhere. What do you, who do you think is going to run this show? They already told you. The United Nations, who runs the top seven militaries all in one accord. We're the last one to crumble probably, but it's going to go bad when it goes. And if you ain't ready now, you ain't going to make it. You're going to lose your mind. You're going to lose your family. You're going to lose your house, and you ain't going to know how to walk with the Holy Ghost. You're not going to know how to tap into the supernatural. You're not going to have faith to see God provide for you And when there is no way. It's time to get ready now. It's time to do something now. So they stone him to death. Notice Jesus was standing at the right hand of the Father. He cares. When you, when you stand up for him, he stands up for you. Oh, he's with you. He cares about you. He wants to help you. He's been wanting to ha get you delivered. But hey, he gave that responsibility to the church, and the church let us down. I was being delivered because I was in the ministry. God wasn't going to let me get hammered with demons. I was being delivered by some things. And I didn't, you know, I, I hear some demons that are out of this world. And I, by the grace of God, I never picked those demons up. And so God was delivering me from what I had. And I wasn't telling anyone about it because they would have thought I was crazy. They ne I never heard those testimonies. I hear these other, uh, I was healed from cancer. I want to give God glory. Just went through six months of chemo. It's all gone. I'm like, whoa, this is chemo and glory. Whoa, more like you made it through hell with that chemo. Give God the glory for that. You know, no one was getting up saying, hey, I was delivered from demons. Hey, I used to do this and that, and I don't do it anymore. I never heard that, so I wasn't going to say it. I learned, church, I learned church behaviors. You don't put yourself out on, you know enough church people, they run people down. They'll stomp you out. When they can't fix you, they don't want to admit they're wrong. Just kind of like the doctor doesn't want to know when he, don't, he doesn't understand when you've got a spiritual disease. He calls it fibromyalgia. We, basically, we don't know what it is. The minister don't want to admit, I don't know what's wrong with you. I did everything I, I do know. I told you everything, fast, pray, read your Bible, everything that worked for me. So I just got to now throw you out as a person that will never learn or call you an apostate or call you some kind of name. Yeah, people don't believe it. People don't believe a lot of things. People play the lotto. How about that one? You ain't winning the lotto. This, this whole world, YouTube, watch some YouTube. I'll drink olive oil, I'm going to die. I drink olive oil, it'll clear all my arteries. I shouldn't eat vegetables, they're really kind of toxic, they have lectins in it. If I eat vegetables, I'll live to be 120. There's misinformation everywhere. But the reality is, 
when you're speaking the truth when it comes to the word of God, God backs you up. And God's going to back this word up tonight and someone's going to get healed and someone's going to get delivered. Hey, I, I find it astonishing. Now, I don't think I'm the best preacher, but my goodness, I'm better than most. I've been to most churches. And we got 35 people here today. And since we, didn't, we knew a lot of people weren't coming, we didn't bother setting up a band. We just said, we'll stick to the preaching and, and the healing and the deliverance. There's a famine for people that, they, oh man, they were coming now when the economy was crashed. People were coming. They were looking for some hope. They were acknowledging there was no hope at their church. Their, their, their preacher was preaching with pessimism. I went to a mega church during the recession. Anyone new came into the Bible study, they weren't happy to see them. They were hoping, hey, you don't, do you have a job? Does, a lot of guys need work. You don't know any work, do you? I mean, it was like, yeah, my name's Rick. Good to meet you. <laughs> I've been coming here. Nothing. Do you have any work? Everyone was perplexed. Everyone was concerned in 2010 when this economy was crashed. But now... Hey, man, we got, the only thing crashing is Bitcoin, if you were stupid enough to buy a Bitcoin. You know what? We crypto mine these things with supercomputers. The minute he said that, I said, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. If, if, if I can't see two pieces that, that, that form together, I, 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 that was like hieroglyphics to me. I, I don't speak Reformed Egyptian. I know Joseph Smith was able to interpret it, but I don't speak it. So now that stuff's crumbling. And uh, but everything else is doing good. Housing market off the hook, uh, stock market booming, jobs going good, and people are going to sleep. They're going to sleep. See, I think that that recession in two thousand nine nine was a wake up call. Some people woke up. I woke up. My money, my money went bye bye. My money was going fast. I couldn't put the plug. I couldn't stop it. I made some changes. I learned how to live with no money. Can't take it now. Don't got any to begin with. I can't be any more happy or less happy if it's all gone. See, you find out what's really important. The Lord's blessed me. I, I, I got myself a track home in Mesa. I don't need to be uh, acting like I don't have. I, I got a Nissan Altima. Come on. Four cylinders, automatic transmission, air conditioning. I'm living the life. No one feels sorry for me on the internet. It's going all right. So, when you get the Holy Ghost, you pass the test. You got to learn how to get along with people. Hey, there's some people, this is how I get along with them. Simple handshake and a couple words and I slowly dip out. But there's some people out there that you can learn a lot from. The first two people that, that discipled me was an 82-year-old man and a 79-year-old woman. And when I was praying for someone to help me and to disciple me and they showed up, I was like, oh, man. What do I got to do? Remind these people of medication at some point in this habit? Well, I mean, what am I here for, Lord? God put me around some people that knew how to pray. They put me around some people that knew how to serve God. They, he put me around some people who denied themselves, that both took early retirement to serve God in the jails where you never get nothing but spiritual blessings and fruit that lasts for eternity. Things that are unseen. They let the seen world go. And it takes you a while to allow that to start clicking in your mind. For me, I'm a little slow learner. It took me about four months. And I sat on that chair one time, and this old man was stumbling around with a crossword puzzle. I don't play crossword puzzle, puzzles, and I'm a terrible speller. And I was helping him out with his crossword puzzles. It was a bad scene. But when he would get up and begin to preach, something came upon him. Something came out of him that wasn't coming out of him when you caught him on a regular basis. That was the Holy Ghost. And I finally got it. I finally got it that that lady, I began to judge her when she'd sing. She was 79, 80, early 80s during this time. And her voice would crack. And I would judge her voice by the way it sounded. I said, oh, it's kind of off today. Oh, man, she needed some, some cough syrup or something. That, that sound, but then I'm sitting there watching, and the Holy Spirit fall on some people, begin to weep in the presence of some sounds that don't sound good, don't sound near as good as she sounded three weeks ago. It was the anointing. See, there's something to 
getting around someone. That's why the Bible tells you, you got to surround yourself with a cloud of great witnesses. You don't surround yourself with a bunch of people that don't care. You don't surround yourself with a bunch of people who love the world and the things of the world. You don't surround yourself with a bunch of people who have no empathy for someone that's struggling, someone that's hurting, someone that's dying. No, you got to get around some Holy Ghost people. And those Holy Ghost people, hey, they know. Hey, I, I got around this guy. He says, hey, I've been around everybody that was a big shot preacher. I'm looking for a chauffeur. I didn't want to be the chauffeur. He said, okay, you're in here now. Hey, you sit back and watch how this goes. Hey, you want to preach? I'll let, them, let you tell your testimony. Keep it to five minutes. Hey, you want to share a verse? I'm going to give you ten minutes. Because he already seen the people that were running off in their own accord. And they always burned out. They always got out into a position where you didn't need God. Where you didn't learn how to trust God. Why? Because you weren't thoroughly taught by a disciple. Someone that was thoroughly showing you and going over the scriptures again and again and again how this thing works. Seen some of them locked up as sex offenders. Seen some of them in my own service for a year and a half. Seen others on meth. Oh, that devil will wipe preachers out with gifts. He'll wipe them out. He ain't afraid of you, not one bit. He's afraid of the Holy Ghost. So what he's got to do is separate you from the Holy Ghost. And he's got a lot of time and he's got a lot of people to start picking at you, to start chipping at you, seeing if you'll go with the same tricks that the rest of humanity has been going over over the last 10,000 or so years. Well, he knows what he's doing. That's why he's called the master of deception. That's why when he says he speaks lies, he speaks his own native language. These demons made this stuff up. Fornication. God didn't make up fornication. They didn't make up depression. God, or God didn't. The devil made up depression. He made sickness. He made disease. He made this, this evil and envy and strife and jealousy and backbiting and complaining. The devil orchestrated all this. That's why it's called, you're not fighting people, it's the principalities and powers, the forces of evil, wickedness and heavenly realms. This is highly orchestrated to take you to hell, to separate you from God, to walk on your own power, because when you get out on your own power, he's going to mow you down. Many of you are in here, you're mowed down. There's people in here, they come, I, I, I have patted myself on the back for what I have broken down to people who wouldn't receive nothing. It felt so good that the Holy Spirit had got me that I said, dude, to, today it's not Mike Smith and Rick Cock. It's me and Mike. Counselors. The dude didn't believe anything. He amen me. Gave a few <laughs> fake little goes at coughs. And then he bounced over to the next minister. What do you think? What do we think? You got anything for me? I quit getting depressed over these things. I had to take joy in what good happened. Lord, you, you used me there. That was you speaking right through me. Hey, I, I, I'm sad that he didn't get it, but I can't fix you. I got no shot at fixing you. That's up to you. That's up to you to change. It's up to you to make some decisions. It's up to you to get up and do something different than you did yesterday. Because if you get up and keep doing the same things that you do before, it's going to be the same results you had in the past, without a doubt, 100%. So we got to change. And see, the, what, what is the easiest confusion the devil pulls on people is when you get saved, instantly I cared. And this is weird for being a ticket scalper. Because to me, people don't like ticket scalpers, so I thought, I'll give it back to you. I don't like you. And once I don't <laughs> like you, I can charge you anything. So my first thing, they'd say, how much is the price? My first reaction was, how much do you want to spend? So I was, it was me against the world. I got saved. Brother Steve leads me to the Lord. Oh, it was a glorious, glorious uh, testimony time. We were smoking pot the day before. Two days earlier, we were gambling basketball because we were bored, $100 a game. I was really pissed because I lost $200 to him. So we had to go from staying at the Hampton Inn down to the Motel 6. That's where he led me to the Lord, in the Motel 6. And I got a care for people, and I'm dumbfounded. I'm at the Super Bowl. When you're at the Super Bowl, it's pretty much $1,000 a deal, everybody you deal with. At least 500 minimum. And I'm walking away, 
And something inside me is saying, hey, did you treat him like you'd want to be treated? <laughs> Who cares? That dude was stupid looking anyway. I, I, I could just tear anybody down to bring him down to where I could control him. And then the, the voice would come back and say, well, did you treat him like you'd want to be treated? Where's the alcohol? I'd go to the mini bar. I'd get a double. Then my flesh would light up. So now I feel like myself again. It's time to go back to work. And it kept happening again and again. So pretty soon, God starts whittling you down when you're saved. There's just an automatic change of some want-tos. I mean, when it came to having sex with women, I was, it was over. I said, oh, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not doing that again, man. You, you, you want to see Psycho come out. Start having sex with somebody out of wedlock. Sac psycho comes out. Close to the Jews running at you with one accord gnashing your teeth. It can get real close. Anytime you start doing stuff out of wedlock, it gives place to the devil, and he'll flare up. And I've had relationships where they flared up, and I realized, you know what? God gave me a good woman. I'm about to go get this right and marry her. There were some things that just click, 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 click. Some, not so much. Had my one foot ball. One day I'm on my, invited Steve over. I'm not putting two to two together that he'd repented. I remembered he smoked weed. So when I brought my bong out, started loading my pipe, and I'm ripping my one, one foot bong, goes a little like this. <laughs> not a very good sound. And, I'm, and he's looking at me like this. What are you doing? What do you mean, dude? Take it easy. You can smoke some too. I'm just first up. It's my house. It's my weed. Back up. Get in line. I'm not understanding what he's talking about. He goes, dude, you're going to pick up demons. I'm thinking, dude, you didn't tell me that the day before you led me to the Lord. You were smoking. We were smoking your weed. So he shows me there's a demon on the bong, and it was one of those graphic type bongs, and they'll have like, it was a Rastafarian skull. And I said, you're right, that is kind of demonic. I instantly went out and threw that bong into the trash can. But I kept my weed in my back pocket. I was going to test what he was saying. I was like a Berean. I was going to have to search the scripture to see what he was saying was true. He proved it with the, with the demon on my bong. But that weed cost some good money now. That wasn't just the brick pack, easy to get stuff. So there's some things... You think you know, but do you really? There's a way that seems right to a man. In the end, it leads to death. Hey, I knew cocaine was bad. It went bad. People did cocaine. It went bad. I couldn't go to sleep. That's bad. I like to sleep. It's the high point of my day. I know it sounds wrong, but I like to sleep. Naps are like pleasant. Some people like to go take a walk in a park and see the beautiful botanical gardens. I like to just take a nap in the car. <laughs> Turn the AC on real cold. Move the seat all the way back. I'm just wired different. And so cocaine, you can't sleep? I said, oh, that's wrong. Alcohol? Oh, man, you drink too much beer, you're going to get a big gut. And if you drink hard alcohol, you're going to jail. It's just the way it works. You're gonna, you, do, you drink hard alcohol enough, you're going to jail. I've been to jail a few times for it. So weed... In my mind, I think, oh, weed's all right. I'm not hurting anyone. I'm kind of a nice guy. You know what? When I'm stoned, I'll even let my wife watch these movies I don't like watching with subtitles. <laughs> I'm a giving person when I'm on weed. It seemed everything right to me. And I was waiting for God to speak real loud to me. I used to do crazy things. I was wrestling with the Holy Ghost. When you're wrestling with the Holy Ghost and you don't know how to obey the Holy Ghost, then, and you don't want to obey the Holy Ghost, it's tough. I'd walk around, that's when the 202 was being built. I lived by there, and it was just, they were just plowing the dirt. And I'd take my bike out there. I said, Lord, just show me a shooting star, you know. Show me one now, and I'll quit smoking this week. And I'm telling you, the Lord stopped all shooting stars. The, the love, while looking up in the sky, if you look for a half hour, you'll see one. He'd shut them down. <laughs> I want this guy getting fooled, saying, I'm telling him that he can smoke weed. I didn't want to quit. I didn't want to do it. It seemed all right to me. A lot of things that seem all right. Now, that's obvious for Holy Ghost Spirit. I hadn't been baptized in the Holy Ghost yet. I was just saved. And uh, so there's a lot of things we can see clearly. Hey, that's not going to cut it. That, that's not going to work. But there's some things that, that you can't see because you stop listening. 
And now that voice is waiting for you to make the move. He already told you to quit doing that. Tell me again, he already told you. Now it's up to you. If you're a mature Christian, it's up to you now to go ahead and, and fix that thing. Repent. You got to trust him. You got to trust him. I mean, I used to sit around twiddling my thumbs. I don't like video games. I think video games are a true waste of time. So when I wasn't smoking weed at night, I didn't know what to do. And I don't really like TV that much. Well, then I found reading some scriptures kind of popped up. Uh-oh, I started liking reading. I started having a little faith, started having a little expectation of what God was going to show me in the scriptures. See, you got to die to yourself to see something of God raise up and manifest in your body, in your life. So here we got... Uh, we got Philip. He goes down to Samaria. Another table waiter. On a missionary journey? Hold on, this guy's in the daily distribution two chapters earlier. He's serving widows' tables, taking care of orphan boys. He's now preaching, running a revival, and the people hearing and what? And seeing the miracles which he did. Well, the gifts went away with the apostles. Well, what about the table servers who got the Holy Ghost? They're doing miracles in Samaria. And they're seeing these miracles, and the miracles are unclean spirits are coming out, crying with a loud voice. They came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. Oh, man, I've seen a few of those. Paralyzed people and lame people walking. You want to get a revival going? It happened every time in Scripture. It happens every time in the jails. It happens in here when people get healed. There's something to it. There's something that's got to be special about the Holy Ghost to you to be able to work in the miraculous, to have faith. That God does want to heal those people. The lepers came to him. There's 10 of them. They said, hey, if you're willing, you can make us clean. We know you can do it. Are you willing? Everybody else kicked us out of town. Hey, we got to ring this bell. I'm yelling at you from a distance because I can be stoned if I come too close to you. Hey, if you're willing, no one else loves us. You got any love for us? He said, I am willing. Be clean. God's not a respecter of persons. What he did is... For one, he'll do for all. Those people had faith. Come on, man. You're all nubbed up. You got, you got a wagon wheel for a, for a crutch trying to roll. Hey, we got to get to Jesus. All 10 of them show up. We don't know how many were in the leper colony, but they make an effort to get to where he is. They cry out saying, hey, if you're willing, they got faith. They got action. You got to have faith and action to move the Holy Spirit. God will walk right on by you, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus. He hears this Jesus. He heard the gospel. He knew that he was healing blind people. He cries out and he keeps moving until he yells out a little louder and won't stop. And he stops. What do you want me to do for you? He drops the blind man's coat. Oh, man. If a tweaker could snatch that coat, boy, he'd be in pay dirt. That thing was issued. It had the embroidery of the synagogue in which issued that, saying that family was in good standing. This was legal blindness. That thing would have been a moneymaker. Kind of like that one show was Slumdog Millionaire, and they took that one kid's eyes out. They said, hey, kids sing with no eyes is twice the money. That coat right there was worth cash. He goes, I don't need this coat. He just called me. That's all I was waiting for. He, something stirred in his spirit when he heard that voice. He's calling for me. This is my day. He had been praying. He had been meditating. On the day he'd meet Jesus, on the day God would show up, he'd be ready. you got to be ready when the Holy Spirit shows up. People coming in here. I think I have some kind of curse in the fourth generation of the Scottish Rite uh, satanic worshipers. Everybody had a curse. If you, anyone in your family going back 10 generations was born out of wedlock, there's a curse. Go read Deuteronomy. That stuff didn't just go away. Them devils come in. You got you to gotta use the authority of Jesus Christ to break the curse, to speak back to it, to renounce it. They don't leave. I used to be a landlord. And then getting people out that had drinking problems was no problem. Weed smokers, oh, easy as can be. Math addicts. <laughs> I had never met a math addict until 1992 being a landlord. These guys would tell me stories. And I say, now he's kooky, but I kind of believe this. <laughs> this is a believable story. I mean, I've never seen so much theatrical emphasis on what he's telling me. The money's coming. The dead uncle really did. 
There's a check in the mail. See you next week. It was unbelievable. I had to, I own that house. They wouldn't pay. I went down and got my three-day pay or quit, and I put it on the door. They still wouldn't leave. I went down. I said, okay, the, the, the judge court is coming. The, the, the sheriff is coming. He's coming today. Here's the letter. That's what it would take for them to leave. Jesus is the sheriff in town, and he'll drive out these demons of depression, demons that are tormenting you, demons that are touching your body at night, demons that are running your kids into sin, tearing up your finances. Oh, Jesus will do something if you let him. If you just activate your faith, he, he loves to come and perform his word. You just got to do what you can do here is believe. And watch this. Well, here's some demons freaking again. There's joy in the city. There's people who are paralyzed, getting healed. But, uh uh-oh, here's a man named Simon. He previously practiced magic arts. The guy repented. He's not practicing magic arts now. And he astonished the people in Samaria, claiming that he was somebody great. And they all gave him heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. Man, I'm telling you, you got to be doing something. I mean, you read those scriptures lightly. Was this guy making human sacrifices? I mean, he had to at least be killing some animals. You don't astonish the least to the great. I mean, you could fool the simple people pretty easy. They're highly intoxicated normally, you know, probably in Samaria. They're a bunch of sinners. You could probably fool those people. But he's fooling everybody from the top to the bottom. This guy's into some real evil now. You just pass that by like... Like, like that's just something, man. These, these, these people that are high up in the evil boy, they put Planned Parenthood into existence. Oh, these people created uh, aspartame and told you it was a sweetener. Oh, they knew it would throw a lump in your breast. They knew it would throw a lump in your brain and cause you to get sick. They knew what they were doing. Oh, yeah, and the guy who did it was the Secretary of Defense in the United States Army. Oh, yeah. You track these people down, they ain't no joke. And they'll make a mockery of you. They will will be in your face. George Bush. God told me to go into Iraq and disarm Saddam Hussein. I'm a Christian. He'll tell you right now he believes the same God for the Jews and for for the Muslims. But everyone will say, yeah, we need him. He's a Christian. We need him in office. Oh, he fooled me. I voted for him twice. I'm not making fun of you. (laughs) These people will fool you like they're somebody great. You know what? We need to go ahead and vaccinate all these Africans. And if we do a good job, we can probably eliminate one-third of the birth rates. Whoops! Did I say that? Did my dad actually run the Planned Parenthood? Whoops! And I became the third richest man in the world by accident, right? These demons are smart. They're so smart. You think Donald Trump has a BlackBerry tech? I don't even think he tweets those things. I think there's a team of 10. We can't crumble, but we got to divide. We got to look, Donald Trump over here. Oh no, he's over there. The whole time rushing the new world order, the one world religion. Uh Oh, look over here, pedophiles. Uh Oh, look over here, more sex scandals in the Vatican church. And the whole time we're coming up with a new one world religion, a one world ruler. He's going to be the great man of peace. How's he going to make peace out of the chaos that they created? You leave this thing alone and it's fine. This world world can do stuff, man. I'm convinced this thing could expand. Oh, we're we're, we're overcrowding there. This thing will grow on you. I'll show it to you. There's some giants. The Jews go into the promised land. It's flowing with milk and honey. And he said, bring back some of the fruit to prove what I'm saying is true to show it to the people. And they said the fruit was huge. Like the the cluster of grapes was huge. Why? It was feeding a 30-foot man. It just produces for what's there. That's what this world would do. God put it into operation. When a man has sex with a woman, he's not like, let me guide that seed. No, your seed naturally goes up and hits the egg and you go ahead and eat food and you get the right nutrients and you grow from a little baby to a toddler to a young boy and to a man. The seasons just move on their own. God spoke it into existence to run on its own. Quit messing with it. It'll be fine. But everybody is astonished at this guy. But they believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. Both men and women were baptized. Simon himself also believed. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip. Well, this guy's got a little something here. He's not just a regular church folk. 
he believes, he gets baptized, and he continues to follow somebody that has the Holy Ghost. Surround yourself with a cloud of great witnesses. He's trying to learn from the guy who's, who's moving in the miraculous. He's doing a lot of right things here. This is looking good so far. And then it says, when the apostles who were in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. For when they had come down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as of yet, he had not yet fallen on them. Well, they got the Holy Spirit when I was baptized. They didn't. These are New Testament believers. They believe and were water baptized. But now, the Holy Spirit's waiting for you to get hungry. You can be born again. You, 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 get, you, you, you know right from wrong. You get conviction. But there's the Holy Spirit falling on you, the immersing of the Holy Spirit. And Peter and John come down. They lay hands on them. And when they had been baptized, for they had only been baptized in the name of Jesus, when they laid hands on them, they received the Holy Spirit. Uh-oh. Now the Holy Spirit freaks. Preaching, we can get this Simon later. Hold on, boys. We're in here. We ain't going nowhere. We're not tripping here. Don't panic, boys. He's just saved. He's just baptized now. We're still in here. But the Holy Spirit comes. And watch this manifestation of demons. He says, he says, and when Simon saw it, that the laying on the hands of the apostles, the Holy Spirit was given to them, he, he moves, the demons make a move. Hey, let me give you money. Let me give you money that I can control this. Give me this power that anyone who I lay my hands on may receive the Holy Spirit. Come on, man, you think this guy, he gave up the sorcery. In, in, in one part, they're, they're burning their sorcery books. Talks about the value of it in silver. It was like $2 million worth of sorcery books. This guy leaves his practice. He might have some building that had a bunch of people working underneath him, reading tarot cards, reading the stars, worshiping demons. He probably, man, he cleaned that place out. He formally had practiced witchcraft. He gave that up. He's baptized. He goes down in the water. The gospel is preached. If you go down in this water, you're saying, I'm dying to myself. And the new man comes. And I'm no longer, I don't own myself. I'm bought with the price. I belong to God. He's going with this. He wants to be discipled. But the demons freak when the Holy Spirit moves time and time again. That's why they freak on us. They freak on us. You, you got people praying. And, and the devil's tricking them that we're putting demons into people. This is how it works. It's an easy scam to run on people. Guy comes in here, can't stop sleeping with hookers, can't stop watching porn four or five hours a day. I got demons. I need to be delivered from lust. Well, he's got faith. He knows he's got demons, and he'll get delivered from lust. He has no idea. He's got pride. He's got anger. He's got murder. He's got rage. He's got sorcery spirits up in there. He's got a curse from being born out of wedlock. And now he goes to some other deliverance ministry because he don't like it here. Because here we tell you, you got to repent. If you don't repent, there's no sense you even staying for the altar time. If you don't repent, I don't want to waste my time. I don't have that much time. And the person goes to the next group and says, hey, I went over there and things got worse. I didn't even have this twitch in my leg until I went there. And the other ministers don't use discernment of spirits, and they say, oh, they're putting demons into you. Right, right. It's happened. Ladies praying, Lord, send your angels that they won't have any money over there. Yep. Wow. Silly. They already paid cash for the building. <laughs> they got candles at Dollar World. Silly, silly. We're laboring for people in here. We don't teach nothing but the gospel of Jesus Christ. You are saved by grace through faith. This is not of yourself. It is a gift from God that no man can brag or boast. But these signs follow them who believe. They shall cast out demons. They shall speak with new, to new tongues. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's what we do here. We keep it simple. Don't get confused with people that aren't all the way delivered. Don't you get confused when you just get a touch of the Holy Spirit and he tells you, I want more. Oh, the more. The more comes. He said, more of my money. Lord, that's why I came for deliverance. The money was getting low. You want more of it? You got to trust me. 
but I'm 50 years old. I'm going to need money soon. I'm going to get old. I don't want to be working when I'm old. Those guys look bad. They get crappy jobs. <laughs> trust me. You got to trust God. He's got you. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He's not short on money. He's not short on blessings. He's not short on miracles. He'll open a door, the Bible says, that no man can open. Come on. I, I've seen it. We can trust him. So he tells him this. Peter says, let your money perish with you. Kind of know the verse, an ill-gotten treasure has no value. Made a lot of money. You don't just astonish people that you're somebody great and don't get paid. These people get paid. They're not in this for, for fun and games and a pat in the back. They're mostly in it for the cash. He's got the cash. He's got the spirits. And he tries to do something completely idiotic. Demonic. You thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You will neither have poor part nor portion in this matter. For your heart is not right. In the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of your wickedness, wickedness and pray that God, perhaps, for the thought of your heart may have forgiven you. For I can see that you are poisoned with bitterness and the bond of iniquity. Christians can't have demons. He's born again. He's given up his old life. He's baptized in water. He's being discipled. Oh, no, you can't have demons. You're filled with the bond of iniquity and bitterness. Come on now. It's right there. We got to get delivered. It's not hieroglyphics. It's not reformed Egyptian. You're a god and you can go to your own planet, Kolob, and have your own spirit babies there. <laughs> Latter-day Saints of Jesus Christ. Are you out of your mind are you out of your mind? It is the craziest ass and demons giggle at the gullibility of humanity. Giggling. Salt Lake City is one of the most beautiful cities in America. It's off the hook. It's prosperous. It's nice. It, those are good looking people. They're not ugly people. I've been to some states. There's some ugly people. You've been to Iowa? Iowa ain't that. Those... That's the, I lived in Nebraska. Omaha, Nebraska was on the border. You just crossed the Missouri River and you were in Iowa. It was a big difference the way these people looked and those people looked. No offense, God loves people no matter what you look like. But I'm just saying. Getting sidetracked. I'm going to stay focused. Not in jail. Jail, we can crack unappropriate jokes. We can get by with it. We're on video. Sorry. <laughs> Apologize. That, that Mormonism is unbelievable. Satan falls from heaven to earth like a bolt of lightning because he wanted to be God. Oh, that fruit God told you not to eat? Let me tell you, he's holding back on you. You'll be just like him. You'll be like a God. You'll know good and evil. You already got eternal life. You're already in paradise. Now you'll know what he knows. It's the original sin. You can be a God. Watch how they're starting to make their move. You can't, they don't use the word Latter-day Saints or Mormon anymore. They're getting rid of it. They're getting rid of it because the world is so dumbed down, so lukewarm that you give it five or six, eight years, that they'll just be able to catch the neighborhood folk coming on in. Because all it is is a bunch of good encouragement, right? All it is is a bunch of friendship and fellowship, and they're the best at it. They're the best networkers with other Mormons to help you run your business and support you financially. You get into a hole, they got a place the size of a, a Costco, and if you've been paying tithes and are in good standing with the church, you can go in there in your downtime and do some shopping. Oh, they're going to suck a lot of people up. They're going to already suck a lot of people up. Knocking on that door. My son goes to Mountain View. Mountain View used to be called Mormon View. It used to be 90% Mormon. Now it's about 60% Mormon. These dudes live like nutcases. They ain't, and they go on missions. 
And my son goes, why are you going on a mission? You sleep with every chick you can sleep with. You do, you're cutting everyone down. You're the most negative person I've ever met. Well, it's a good learning experience. <laughs> Two years? Kid had a college scholarship even and gave it up. Is he going to try to go to a JUCO when he gets out of the Mormon mission? Two years? Are you kidding me? This devil is running game like you cannot believe on humanity. He's leading this whole world to hell. He's taking everybody by the, by the thousands, by the multitudes, and he's going to drop them off and throw them into hell. And, well, I just am depressed, you know. Things just aren't going so good. My, I had money and my job, and dude, you are getting smashed by the devil. He has smashed your eyes closed where you think it's all about you. It's all about your life, all about your things, all about the way you feel. You rise up, you're sick. He said, pray for one another that you would be healed. You want to move and fast track your deliverance? Go help other people get delivered. You get this thing going, you get your head right, you get some understanding, you start walking free from some sin for a little bit of time, passing some tests, and you go help somebody else. And this thing will fast track for you. A few more verses. We'll wrap this up. We'll get to the good stuff, which is the prayer. He said, behold, I'm sending you out as Sheep amongst wolves. You thought it was going to be nice? Who told you it was going to be nice? Who told you it was going to be easy? He said, I'm going to send you out with wolves. Do you know the matchup between uh, a wolf and uh, a sheep? Sheep have no fangs. At least a badger or a raccoon or a possum could turn around and got a few fangs that could put up at least a little bit of a some kind of two-second war or something against a wolf. Sheep got nothing. They got no speed. They can't outrun a wolf. They can't, they don't have endurance even as good as a wolf. They're done. The only way the sheep makes it is if he stays with the shepherd. Right, come on. You the only way you make it is God, God puts the fork in the road. Are you gonna stay close with me and are you gonna do what I commanded? Because at this point, it's either you're out there on your own, trusting in men, trusting in yourself, trusting in all your wisdom and your finances, but I'm going this way. And he says, this way is a thin and narrow road. And he tells you it's going to be hard. I know the TV preacher, you won't make a dime. You can't sell a book to the masses. You can't cover the airtime coming hardcore and telling them you're going to have to fight the good fight of faith. You're going to have to war the good warfare. If you're going to go to glory, you're going to be one that overcame. Sending you out as sheep among wolves, therefore be as wise as serpents, as harmless as dove. That would have been a good one for the lady. She stepped out to go to the restroom. You got to be, you got to be wise as a serpent. People will trip you out. People will, people will astonish you had a dude I was helping him out man my heart broke for him I was talking to him at the gym sharing the word of God with him someone stole his bike gave him a ride home next thing a dude's texting me he's gay want to know if I'm bisexual I had, I had a feeling there was some kind of wisdom that I would have cut out with the sorry your bike got stolen brother and went on home and and went to bed this is a sin stained world man people have ulterior motives People are vicious. People are manipulative. And you know what's so crazy about it? They don't even know they do it. They don't even know what they are. They think they're good people. They'll look at you like you're crazy when you spot something in them that's unbiblical. They'll be pissed off when you tell them the word of God. They'll act like you're the nutcase. I know, I've tried it a few times. Matthew 28, 18 says this, Jesus came to them and spoke, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. He said, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, I thought we were supposed to baptize in the name of Jesus only. I'm glad some brothers figured that out and corrected the Lord Jesus here in Matthew chapter uh, 28, some red letter ink. You figured it out. But this word says, Go and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things I have commanded you. And lo, watch this. I'm with you always, even to the end of the whole thing. Not those people that went over here on their own. So you know what's scary? 
What's scary for us in the deliverance ministry isn't that you have depression, isn't that someone's molesting you at the night as a spirit, not that you have been railroaded, that you have lost all your money as things that went bad. That does not scare us. What scares us is when you're over here on your own and everything's fine and you don't care. Oh, that's scary. That's scary. Being in a place where you need God, hey, you're just where he had to get you. You wouldn't have listened to me. You would have thought I was a nutcase. You would have clicked on me from YouTube. You wouldn't have went over to Olive Oil is Healthy and clear all your arteries in six months. <laughs> they got a lot of stuff on that YouTube, man. Mark 16, 15, he said to them, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Oh, man, preaching the gospel is powerful. I used to be a guy trying to convince you. Even did it smoking some weed early on. But I got rid of that and I got a little better. But I was always trying to fit it in and fill in your blanks and trump your, your false beliefs. Oh, not anymore. I just preach it and sit back and watch God move. And I don't, my heart does, oh, he's not saved. They didn't, they didn't receive it today. It has something to do with me. Oh, no, it doesn't. His word of God comes back non-void. It's powerful. It's sharp. It'll pierce down into your soul. Judging your thoughts and attitudes. Oh, it's powerful. And what's great about being a jail preacher is uh, it's a one-man show. There's no uh, back and forth debate either. But that's where I learned to be patient. That's where God had to teach me how to be patient and watch him do his thing. Watch what his word does. Hey, it's unfortunate. Some will trample it. Some will, it won't mean nothing. Some will contemplate it for a second. It gets snatched. But he says, you got to go and preach it to every creature. But if you don't got your life right, don't, don't give place to the devil looking crazy. Get crazy off your face. Get that anger out of your head. Get that gossip out of your tongue. Get that quitter spirit out of your soul. You'll be, you'll be a light into this dark world. You'll be salt into this earth. He said, go make disciples all the na nations, baptize them. Oh, here we're already on 16, 15. He said, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. Who does, he who does not believe will be condemned. And what? These signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. This is one that I've yet to find anyone. Christians can't have demons. Well, who you cast them out of? Oh, my preacher says, well, who's he cast demons out of? It's always zero. It's always zero. Because if you go and you got the nerve to go ahead and cast some demons out of somebody, God will say, hey, I got a player here. I got someone willing to do what I commanded to do. Let me show you some more. But if you don't care about it at all, you don't get no portion in it. Go speak in tongues. Do not forbid speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues of the devil. Come on, man. He said, don't forbid speaking in tongues. These signs follow those who believe. They'll speak in tongues. It was foreign languages. Well, if you got the gift of, of, of tongues, it can be foreign language, but everybody can speak in tongues that's born again. And that's personal edification. Speaking in language unknown to man, but known to God. Make that up. That's scripture. They'll take up serpents. They'll drink anything deadly. I've also added in food. So I don't trip when I eat at Chipotle. I eat at Payway. I eat at the, the buffet now right down uh, on the corner at the new uh, Sprouts. And I say, hey, if I eat something poisoned or I drink anything poisoned, it's not harming me. I claim this verse. I'm good. I'm not tripping. Take up the serpents. Ex follow the devil. Not dance with snakes. I watched those kooks the other day. One got bit in his neck and was bleeding. Yeah, we've been doing this for years. Poisonous vipers. We go out and hunt them all Saturday. Like, dude, no, you were supposed to get rid of the snakes. You were supposed to get rid of the serpents. You're supposed to throw them out. You got to get ACDC. ACDC, man. I could, I could beat you in a fight if I played ACDC. <laughs> Maybe not anymore, but back then I could. It got me hyped up. God said, you got to dump this stuff. I don't know no Rob Zombie. I don't know no Pink Floyd. I don't know no NWA. I don't, I don't know these people. 
I don't know you. Oh, come on, man. I had to let him go. I had to, I had to throw him out. To me, it was a hard transition. That was one of my hardest transitions, listening to Christian music. And I think part of it was, a lot of it was bad and unanointed. I said, man, these are like, these aren't even C level. Like, like ACDC is an A. B is like Poison and Bon Jovi. Uh, these dudes are like D's singing this stuff. These are like nightclub singers singing this Christian stuff. In, in the 90s? But once you throw something out, when you had it with you and you're comparing it, once you get rid of something, I can see these jokers that are just capitalizing off the Christian market that are on these radio stations. And I can, I can tell you people who got the anointing. Because God will give you ears to hear if you want to hear. He'll give you eyes to see if you want to see. But if you don't want to see, you can shut your eyes. And if you don't want to hear, you can shut your ears. But worship is powerful. That's a big part of me being whittled down. Whittled down. I got so whittled down, I never let anyone talk back to me in my life. Now, I did if there was a bunch of you. And if you were a gangster, I certainly did then. But if it was just one or two guys in the gym, or especially if you was a white dude, I grew up in Nebraska. We knew we. I came here. My buddy said, "Hey, you can't talk like you were talking in Nebraska. That one guy knows twenty, and they'll be at your door." Really? That's not how we did it. That's how it goes here. So I, I, I was not stupid, but I would not let any one person ever disrespect me until the Lord started whittling me down. I remember the first time it happened. I smiled. I said, wow, I can't believe I don't care that this dude is punking me out. I can't believe I don't care that these three idiots over there are looking at me like I'm scared. And this smile, now I'm looking like I'm mentally ill. <laughs> he got rid of the anger through worship. You start learning how to praise God, he'll start... He'll start opening up the windows of heaven. He'll start teaching you what pleases him. Oh, man, you'll start thinking like God thinks. You'll start talking like God. See, God inhabits the praises of his people. Man, I'm telling you, I've sung two times in jail. It was a double anointing. I wouldn't do it if Karina gave me $200 right now. I'd pass. I'd say, Karina, for the sake of the YouTubers, these people I could deal with, but not the YouTubers. I wouldn't do it. But man, when the Holy Ghost, you don't care. You don't when that when that spirit of worship, some some inmate moved on over kind of funny to the piano and started playing. Something was in him. Started coming out on those keys. I started opening my mouth. Some little thought came and said, You might sound stupid. It faded. Real quick, it got absorbed like 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 a vapor in a hot day in Phoenix. It was done. Come on now, it's hard to worship when you're a, when I was going through the real hard times before I learned about deliverance. Man, I had to open my. I mean, I was. They had to give me two songs with a lead guitar at the mega church before I could even get going. <laughs> Third song in, I, I could start you know moving a little to the side. Oiling up the joints a little. Fourth song, you know, I could I could lip sync kind of so people thought I was singing. You go five. Now, four, you cut it. That's all you're getting. If it went five, I could go ahead and sing along, at least in the chorus part. If it was a song that I was familiar with and kind of liked. There wasn't no worship. That devil sucked it all out of me. That's a sign that you need deliverance when he sucked all the worship out of you. And all you've got is biblical facts. And all you've got is God told me. And God told me this. And you sound like a nut and don't even know you sound like a nut. You don't live like God told you anything. But you sure talk a lot like God told you this and God told you that. And people just look at you like you're nuts and wonder why your ministry isn't taken off and why they're not bearing much fruit for the kingdom. Because your worship was sucked out of you. These demons will take it all. Oh man, they come in with a lie and they start setting up shop. You can't. You can't give place to him. Watch this. I'm going to end a couple, two verses and we're going. Oh, foolish Galatians, 
Who has bewitched you? This is the church of Galatia. This isn't the sinners of Galatia. This is the saints of Galatia. To the church of Galatia. Who put a witchcraft curse on you? Who came into church with this witchcraft? He said, you should not obey the truth. They're turning from the truth with a witchcraft curse. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to, want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? They had the Spirit, and now they got a witchcraft curse on them. They're turning into those legalistic people. The spirits don't quit. They didn't quit for the Galatians. They didn't quit keep coming for Jesus. They left him in the wilderness until another opportune time. They manifested in Peter. He tells Peter, the demons in him get behind me, Satan. It, it sounds like it's Satan himself in him, manifesting in his disciple. He said, now they're going on trying to be made perfect in their own flesh. That's a sign of a witchcraft curse. They pray, witches pray curses over all Christianity. They don't need to find Bob down the street that runs a Bible study. They're praying over all of it, trying to deceive you to take this thing into your own hands. Just like I said, they started in the Holy Spirit. They received the Holy Spirit by faith. Those first ministers that are coming in the jails that I knew 17 years ago, they were on fire for Christ. But then the devil, oh, a witchcraft spirit came and got them out on their own accord. I can do this on my own. No, you can't. I'm Superman. I'm really proficient in my biblical knowledge. I've done so much for Christ. I've seen 500 healed. I've led a crusade in Africa. I, I got this. He'll tell you anything he's got to tell you to get you out on your own. And he'll send a false spirit where you feel good. You feel fine. There's nothing wrong. But all of a sudden, you got to look back and you wonder, why aren't people healed as much? Hey, why isn't there any deliverance going on? And then the demons freak. And instead of gnashing their teeth, throwing a fit, they say, just preach more. Hey, dance on that stage. Hey, get some church dancers. Let's have the hip-hop crew. Hey, let's go ahead and bring in the Michael ja Jackson thriller dance. That was the last one for my wife to, let, to keep at the mega church in Mesa. I had quit long ago. She kept going until they did thriller on the stage dressed as ghouls. We can't get no one healed no more. We can't get no one delivered. We got to bring the attraction. And you know what? The religious spirit goes, you know what? We'll justify it because we're proclaiming Christ and teaching Jesus. So someone's going to get saved if they're the elect. If they're the ones that are truly going to get saved, they're going to get saved. If they're not of us, then they were never really with us. And so it's not on us anyway. Oh, these things. Will, these things will run game on you like you don't know. You ain't never seen the wiles of the devil. You think you know, but you've got no idea because he's so subtle that you lived all your life and didn't know you had demons until you started getting close to God, until you started moving in the miraculous and the Holy Spirit, until you started having the faith to advance the kingdom, until you started having the faith to wage a war on the devil, and he lined up to show you where he stood. Adrian Peterson is a freak. This guy is a running back. He runs for, he, he's been around for like 12 years. And he's like six foot three, 245 pounds at 6% body fat. He makes Adonis look like an average Greek, Greek guy. He's a freak. But you know what? He has a hard time getting 100 yards rushing every game. Why? They got 11 opponents. Average guy makes a million dollars a piece. Some of them $5 million a piece to take his head off. And they practice and study day in and day night at those, at those training centers for those other professional ball clubs how to stop him. And they study and they train. How can we stop him? Here's the plays of what they've done before. And here's their MO. And we got to study those so we can be in the right place to stop him. Oh, the devil's under my feet. We don't talk about him in here. He's under my feet like a rug. <laughs> Those people are hurting people. They're hurting people. you got to give somebody the equipment to win. There's an unfortunate thing happens in high school. And I don't feel bad for them now because they're all in great health, jumping around, climbing mountains on Facebook. I watch them. But they're the guys that they started playing football, but they just never grew. But they loved football. 
Those are the ones with no knee injuries, no back pain, no headaches, no concussions. They're doing just great. Don't feel sorry for them. They're winning. But they, the coach lets them play because they've been there since Pop Warner, since they're five. And at one point, the coach basically has to tell them, dude, we can't get you hurt out there. You know, I know you want to play, but I can't put you out there. You know, you're slow. It's not like you're little and you're fast and you're playing corner. We got you at the line because you're slow. And now you're little. We can't do this to you. It's a heartbreak. You got to tell people the reality. You can't wage a war against the devil by yourself. He will mow you down and run you over. You can't walk as a Christian not knowing and being known by somebody else. You, you, you can't think you know it all, just you reading these scriptures and trying to do it. You're not Superman. You need to get around someone who's doing this thing and learn and walk and, and, and ask questions and, and get help and prayer when you ram into something that's too big and, 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 and get another plan of attack and another strategy how to advance and how to move and, and how to press on and not to let that same thing happen again and again and again. But they don't even bother. They don't even bother. Well, we're not going to do that here. We're not going to do this. I don't care if we get 50 people to the day I die. I don't care. I gave that up. Now in the jails, if I get too small a crowd, I'm going to get depressed. Uh, but in here, I don't care because this is the meat right here. You didn't come here like in jail because you didn't have nothing better to do. You came here because you wanted something. Because you needed something. Because the Holy Spirit nudged you here until you use your faith to put your keys in your car and get yourself here. So right now you're in a position that I believe in my heart is a divine appointment. I don't care if you didn't figure deliverance out the first or second or 15th time you've been here. I don't care about that. I care about right now. I care about right now. God deals with you right now. God is such an awesome, incredible God. When I think about God sometimes, I, I got to stop. Just the, the ability for him to be outside of time and space, creating time and space. And he knows time and space from the beginning to the end. Yet he's able to deal with us today no matter what we do tomorrow. Even if it's the wrong thing with the gift that he gives us today. He's an incredible God. And I'm telling you, today he will deal with you according to your faith that you have right now. Right now. If you'll exercise your faith to get what you want, God will move and he will help you. Come on, man. It's not good enough having that small voice like I had uh, not to treat people bad and get over them on money. I had to change. It's not right that you just have a small voice inside you telling you there's something more I have for you. There's a bigger ministry. I know that everyone doesn't believe it for you. I know, I know that at times you don't believe it for yourself, but he's speaking that small little voice. And even though you try to drink and you try to go back to the old ways, the voice doesn't stop because he cares about you. He wants to help you. He wants to finish this thing that he began. See, it didn't begin with you. It didn't originate with you. It wasn't an idea that you brought to God saying, what do you think about this? It was an idea that was put in you by God before you were even formed in your mother's womb. He knew you and he had a plan for you. He knew what type of man and a woman you'd be and he loved you. Despite of the man and woman you became. Imagine that kind of love. He doesn't care. He doesn't care because he's got the power to forgive. Now you have to repent. He cares about that. If you repent and you turn to him. See, he says, apart from me, you can do nothing. He says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Uh, apart from me, you'll bear no fruit. So the fact that your ministry hasn't taken off, you have to realize the devil has pulled you away from the vine. And seminars pump you up and you do good for a week and a month. And sometimes you get a stride going for a season. But the reality, there's always this thing that keeps coming and separating you. Where I'm telling you, it's demons. Look at the attitudes. Look at your mindset. Look at your health. Look at your finances. Look about the worry that's inside your belly. You can always track it down to a symptomology that has nothing to do with God and everything to do with the demonic force. All we got to do is turn on them. Turn on them. Turn on them. See, Adrian Peterson, when he's running, he realizes that they want to smash him. And so he, when he, he doesn't just put his head down and kind of 
chop his feet, as, get as much yards as he can. No, he will take his arm, and he will launch a defensive back, a linebacker. It's called the stiff arm, and he will run on by him. See, I think that's what you do today is you give the devil the stiff arm. In the name of Jesus, I command you to get back and away from me. I'm sick of what you're telling me in my mind. I'm sick of what you've been doing in my body. I'm sick and tired of all these offenses, and I know it's you. And you just repent right now and forgive. Start clean. It begins with forgiveness. Without for repentance, there's no gospel. Without forgiveness, you don't get saved. He forgives you. What you receive, he asks you to give it away. But if you don't give away the simple first thing that you receive from God, no miracle ever flows. you got to forgive those who despitefully mistreated you, misused you, abused you, violated you, raped you, cursed you out, ran you over. It's a sin-stained world. The older you are, the more lists you have of the bad and poor things that happen to you by people that you actually even care about. Now you're able to forgive the people that you don't care about, but now it's hard to forgive the people that you love and you trusted and needed the most, and they hurt you. you got to forgive them. How do you do it? It's supernatural. He gave it to you. It's a supernatural gift. I forgive you unconditionally, me, for all myself, all my selfishness, all my pride, all my manipulation, all my deceit, all my greed, all this lust I had, all the drugs, everything. He just forgave me instantly like that. What you receive, freely give. By faith, I release you. I pray for you. I bless you. I turn you over to God. I don't want you to go to hell for what you did because I know sin will send somebody to hell. I don't want you going to hell for that sin. I bless you. I pray you have eternal life and blessings. That's how you do it. We can do it right now. And if you'll repent, and if you'll forgive, the devil has no legal right to a Christian. He's got no legal right. He's just, he's just trespassing. He's just trespassing. You just go ahead now. Once you take care of business, then you use the authority God gave you to bind him. Whatever's bound on this earth is bound in heaven. How does it work? I got no idea. But he says, I'll do it. I understand how a cop binds you. I've been hemmed up by cops a couple times in my life. Hey, starts with freeze. And I understand that way. But how it happens in heaven, I don't know that way. But he says he'll do it. He'll perform his word. You, you, you exercise your authority. You speak the word of God. It's living and it's active. Devil, I bind your power. Now you loose his holds and drive him. You drive him out. You get to move him. You don't sit back, Pat, let me see if this deliverance is real. Let's see if we can go anywhere. I've tried the new age. I've, I've tried this church. And, no, 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 no. You got to fight. You got to hate him. You got to hate him. He's been running your life. He's taken family members of yours to hell, and there is no second chance. It's over for them. You got to hate some being that your God and Lord hates. He hates the devil, and no Savior's coming for him. His Portion is the lake of fire. Hell was never made for a human. It's made for him and his rebelled angels. It's written. It'll never change. It's the way it is. You just got to get in line with it right now. How do we do it? I'm glad you asked. Right now, in your, in your heart, under the softness of your breath, Lord Jesus, today's my day. Today's my day, Lord. It all stops now. It's the day I die to myself. Everything that's of God, everything that's good, it'll remain, but it's the day that the sin dies. Lord, I repent right now of my gossip, my jealousy, my backbiting, my critical nature, my doubting your word, the anger, the envy, the lust, the selfishness, the manipulation. Lord Jesus, I repent of it all right now. Forgive me, Heavenly Father. Forgive me, Lord Jesus. Have mercy on my soul. Have mercy on me right now, Lord Jesus. Have mercy on me, Lord Jesus. I've condemned myself. I've hated myself. I've been my own worst enemy for seasons, Lord. And I repent of that. That's sin. You have forgiven me. I'm not going to stand in the way anymore of your will. I forgive myself. I forgive myself right now in the name of Jesus. I'm forgiven and that's the way it is. I got another chance at this thing. I'm going to do it with the Holy Ghost. I tried it on my own. I tried it at halfway with you and me and it didn't work. Today I forgive myself and I'm doing it the right way. I'm doing it fully trusting you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you send the Holy Ghost. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's just a test. I didn't see it the way you showed in the scripture. It's just a test. I had to be a servant. I had to have some wisdom. I had to have the Holy Spirit power. I, I took off too fast. I heard a sermon. It looked good. I compared myself with others. I did it on my own power, and I got stopped by the devil. Oh, Lord, I see clearly now. I repent, Lord. I tried to do it my own way. I tried to do it on my own power. I tried to do it with the experiences that me and you had together. But Lord, I had to walk with you in intimacy. Lord, I repent right now and forgive myself. I repent of trusting in my own power. Right now in the name of Jesus. I bless everybody. I bless those Mormons. I bet them I, you could do a revival where those became the Holy Ghost churches. I bless every cult, every person that said we were fake ministers, prayed against our finances. I pray you send them double finances. I pray you'd send them all kinds of joy and all kinds of gifts, all kinds of blessing, all kinds of kindness. You bless them all, Lord. I bless everybody in those hospitals. We got nervous in there not trusting people. I bless the people that looked crazy in there, the people that didn't like their job. I pray joy would come down on them. They'd be joyful people. I pray blessings on these people, Lord. I'm not cursing no more. I'm blessing. That's the way I'm going to do what you do, Lord. You loved and you were... You were moving in compassion continually with the harlots, with the tax collectors, with the poor, and with the Samaritans, those that were hated by the Jews. You loved them all and you moved with compassion. It's time I line myself up with your ways and your will. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, Lord, I forgive my mom and dad and these, these ex-lovers. Oh, those went so bad. Ex-husbands and wives. Oh, Lord, I want you to take the pain out of my stomach. I want you to take the pain out of my stomach right now when I think about those people. Streamers, don't go through the motions. Speak out loud. It's how you get yourself free now. I forgive. I forgive that person that raped me, pushed me into sex, got me drunk that night. I forgive them. I release them, Lord. That was evil, but I know that evil was, 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 was originated in hell, and it was perpetrated and, and manifested through that person. I forgive that person. I place my hate on the devil. He did that. I bless those people right now. I bless those corrupt bankers. Got me in that bad loan. Lost my house 10 years ago. I bless those bankers and those crooked loans. I bless them all. I bless them all. They took my money. I bless them all. I forgive them right now. I'm wiping this slate clean with everybody. They're not paying me that money. <laughs> it ain't coming anyway. That apology ain't never coming. And if it came, it wouldn't be enough. I forgive them and bless them right now. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we're here. Lord, we're coming with nothing now. We're coming with nothing, Lord Jesus. We're approaching the throne of God boldly. We have a need tonight. We need to be set free. There's some people that got to be set free tonight. We got to have the moving of the Holy Spirit right now, Lord Jesus. We place our need according to your word and know that you came to set the captives free. You came to set at liberty those who are oppressed by the devil and we give you praise that you're going to move in this place because we are coming to you, the author, the perfecter of our faith. This time we go through some perfection. We go through some refining. We go through some cleansing of the filthiness that's on us. We're in your presence right now, Holy Spirit. We're in your presence right now, Lord Jesus. We want you to move right now. We're going to start moving in the authority that you gave us. I got nothing. Rikat is nothing. Rikat don't cast out no devils. It's the Holy Ghost. I speak your word. You perform your word. It's you. It's you. You are the mighty and awesome God. You are the deliverer. We want you to move, Holy Spirit, in this place. There's some sick bodies. We, we, we believe that you were whipped by your stripes. We can be healed. The same way that blind Bartimaeus, the woman with kyphosis, the woman with the issue of blood, the lepers, the same way that they were healed. We're going to be healed tonight because we're going to exercise our faith and we're going to look for you, the only one that can heal. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I bind right now all demons of distraction. All demons of discouragement, I bind you right now in the name of Jesus. All religious spirits that would begin to manifest to stop the deliverance and the movement of the Holy Spirit, I bind you right now in the name of Jesus. I bind you right now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. I bind you right now. Condemnation and self-hatred come out right now. Self-hatred and condemnation, I bind you right now. Stop condemning yourself. Stop letting those devils talk to you, telling you it's not you, it's not your night. Maybe tomorrow, watch it again tomorrow. He's lying to you. 
Come out now, you condemning doubt and unbelief spirit in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. I now take authority over every curse that came down through the family line, and I break the curse, I break the hex, I break the vex, I break the hoodoo and the voodoo, the witchcraft incantation, the prayers of witchcraft. I cancel in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I uproot those curses, and I command them to go right now. Go! Curses, go! Curses of sexual immorality and perversion. Curses of rape and child molestation. Curses of murder and death. I break you in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Come out now. Come out now. Depression. Depression. Come out. Come out now. Depression. Come out now. Come out now. If those yawns, keep those yawns going. Those are the light spirits. Just loosen your mind so that these big ones can come out. Keep going. Come out now. Depression and anxiety. The spirit that's a quitter. The spirit says, a quitter, I bind you in the name of Jesus. The spirit said, it's not for me. The spirit of sickness and disease, I bind you. The ministry team is going to come to the front. We're going to be able to come to the altar, but I want you to fight some more of these spirits right now. Doubt and unbelief, you come out right now. That doubt and unbelief spirit that said, I'm not coming to the altar of God to receive the promises of God. I bind you in the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of God. The demons that told you these devils were too strong that we couldn't get them out. You're lying to them, devil. The Holy Spirit is always able to kick out a demon. Anytime, anywhere, any place. I bind you right now. Sexual immorality, the spirits of compromise. I bind you right now. Saying sexual with, with somebody that's not my wife, even though I'm going to be married in the future. I bind those right now in the name of Jesus. We're in, we're in love. I bind those lying spirits right now. You're trying to hold them back from being fully delivered. Come back now. Come out now, right now. Come out right now. Take a big breath now. Come on. Exercise your faith. Come out right now. Mental illness, come out. Come out. Mental illness, come out right now. Take another big breath. Mental illness, you come out right now. Lies in their mind. You come out right now. Distraction spirits, I bind you right now. Come out. Come out right now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Pain in their stomachs, I command you to come out right now. Pain in their souls from past wounds. I bind you right now in the right and mighty name of Jesus. Rejection and hurt from church people. I bind you in the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of God. I command you to let them go right now. The demons that tell you you can't trust people, you can't trust leadership. No one understands you. No one trusts you. No one loves you. You come out right now. You lied to them. You've rooted into their souls, and I re uh, rebuke you right now. Let's go. Now make your move to this altar. If you know there's a place you need to be and you're not there, you come to the front. If you know you need healing and you're not healed, you come to the front right now. We're going to pray with you. It says one can put a thousand to flight, but two can put ten thousand to flight. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Streamers, keep going. Streamers, right now, just come to the front. This ministry team will pray for you. Streamers, keep going. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray everybody that's watching on YouTube, everybody that's watching on the internet, I bind those demons in operation that are working against their minds. I bind those demons that are working against their, their finances. I break you in the name of Jesus, the spirits that cause confusion, spirits that led them into false religions and cults. I bind you in the mighty name of Jesus. All those spirits that came in through the new age and cults, I break you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, the Son of God. I command you to come out. Come out of those streamers right now in the mighty name of the Lord. Come out of those streamers in the name and the authority of Jesus Christ. Come out now, I bind you. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out of him. Come out. Fear and anxiety. Fear and anxiety. Rejection from childhood. Come out of him right now in the mighty name of the Lord. Let him go. Let him go. He is called. He is a man of God. Let him go. We come at you in the name of Jesus. Go. Go. Go in the name of the Lord. Go out. Go out. Take a big cough right in your belly to start coming out. Go, go out, go out, go out, come out faster, come out faster, come out, come out faster, come out faster, come out, come out, you've been tormenting the family for years, sickness and disease spirits, racing mind spirits, I bind you, fear, come out, come out, come out now, go, come out now, go, come out now, go, come out now, go, I bind you, I lose you, keep, take a big breath, go, come out, let's go, come out, come out, let him go, let him go. You're trying to hold him back. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out now. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. Sickness and disease. Crack cocaine. Come out. Crack cocaine. Come out. Drugs. And lying. Go. Get out. Get out. Get out. Just relax. Take a couple big breaths. Here, take that. Okay. Thanks. Just, real, just relax. Thank you, Jesus. Send the Holy Ghost. Send the Holy Ghost. Don't spray in tongues right now. Just take a few big breaths. These things are going to come out. Just, just relax. Come out. Shame. Shame from when he relapsed all those times. Come out. Just relax. Come out. It's not done by might and strength. You prayed good. You prayed in tongues good. Just for now, take a breath. Come out. 
condemnation from all the times he relapsed. All those curses that came when he gave money to those drug dealers. I break you in the name of Jesus. All those times he fornicated when he knew the truth. I break you now. I break you now. I break you now. Come out. Keep taking a few big breaths. I want you to take two, two towels from your belly. Not your lungs, but your belly. Just two. Take them. Come out. Two towels. He's blocking you. No, from your belly. Those are from your lungs. Two of them. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Just relax. Come out. Come out now. I bind you. We repent, Lord God. We repent of all the years of drugs, all the years of abuse, all the years of abuse, all the years of drug abuse. We repent of it now. Just relax. Go. Go. Anxiety. Anxiety. Come out. Restlessness. Spiritual confusion. Come out. Spiritual confusion. We thank you, Lord. He's here. He's here. Just fight through. Fight through. In the name of Jesus, when I count to three, devil, I break you. You're coming out. One. Two, three. Come out of there. Come out of there. Get out of there. Come out of there. What are you praying for, sir? One thing that I've so I've been praying for a lot of things too. Like, well, one thing I still kind of deal with is lust. And one thing that's kind of come to me and I've always dealt with, but it's only like came on to me today that I realized and it's been a big problem for me. I've been involved with the church for a long time. And I had big deals with anger and rage. And sometimes I get like I feel like it's righteous and I feel like like okay. Who do you need? Who were you forgiven when we were praying for that forgiveness? Who were those people? You are done. I think. But who were they? It has? Did you ever ever hard on yourself? Are you ever really critical on yourself? Okay. All right, well, let's forgive ourselves. This stuff will come out, okay? Just pray this with me. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. You love me, Lord. You love me, Lord. Despite of all my failures. Despite of all my deficiencies. All my rebellion. You love me, Lord. I'm sorry for hating myself, Lord. I repent of that, Lord. And I forgive myself right now. Thank you, Jesus. Now, devil, I bind you in the mighty name of Jesus. All that porn had to do with criticism and rejection and self-hatred. I bind you right now in the name of Jesus. Your spirit of division, keeping him from the church folks and the godly people and the disciples. I bind you now. I bind fear. I bind critical nature. I bind you right now. I bind you right now. In the name and the authority of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of him right now. Take two big cough right from your belly. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Fear, come out. Fear, come out. Fear. Fear, come out. Fear, come out. Fear, come out right now. Fear that he's not good enough. Come out. Fear that he's not good enough. Fear that he's not love. Come out right now. Fear that he can't live free. Fear that he can't live in power. I break you right now. Fear, come out right now. Fear, come out right now. Fear has to do with torment, but the love of God cast out fear. Come out. Come out. I break you. Come out. I break you right now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. Come out of there. Okay, what are they in there? Which one? I still have an issue with the Lord. I still have the Lord Jesus. Jesus. I got the Lord. And I went back to the Lord. I went back to doing what I got set free from. I didn't finish. And I'm sorry, Lord. I took your kindness and your power for granted. Have mercy on me, Lord. I don't want to look at the victims on my side, Lord. I don't want those spirits to take over my sexuality. I don't want to do that, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. I've been angry and frustrated. I've been condemning myself. I gave place to the devil and I did evil. They could have came back sevenfold worse. The Bible told me that. I'm sorry, Lord. Forgive me, Jesus. Have mercy on me, Lord. I can't take the things of God for granted. Forgive me, Lord God. 
One more time. Let me feel your mercy. Let me feel your forgiveness one more time. Lord Jesus, I'm here. I'm seeking you with my whole heart. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I went back. I'm ready to turn my life over to you now. Go faster. Wounds of rejection, go. Wounds in the soul, go. Wounds in the soul, come out. Wounds in the soul, come out. Wounds in the soul, word curses from men, come out. Word curses from those men, come out. Word curses, come out. Word curses from her dad, come out. Come out separate yourselves one from another in the name of Jesus. Go. When your name is called, you will come out. That wound on her soul, I command it to loose right now. I command that wound on her soul to loose when that man lied to her, broke her heart, betrayed her, Please. took advantage of her. We forgive him. Please Please that, what's that person's name? <clears throat> relationship with somebody yeah. hurt you and felt wrong. Yeah. Said he loved you and he didn't love you. What's his name? I'm actually married, but I have my husband right now. Okay, what's well, deal with that too? What's what's the first man's name? Prince. Okay, what's your husband's name? Okay. Lord Jesus, say that to me. I'm sorry about it. I'm holding all this back. I've been hurt. I've been hurt by my ex boyfriend. And I have some hurts right now in my marriage. I want you to come in and tell me what's going on. I bind you right now in the name and the authority of Jesus Christ, and I command you to come out. Take two big coughs. Come out. Let's go, devil. Up and out. Up and out. Go. Go. Go out. Go out. Go out. Go out. Go out. Come out of there. Wounds from the past lover. Come out. Wounds from the wounds from the husband. Come out now. Let her go. Let her go now. Come out. Go. Come out of that body. Come out of that body now. Hey, transfer demons go. come out right now. Transfer go. spirits go. Go. All transfer Pain demons your soul. leave go. right now. Leave. Keep I'll coming out. Up Keep and out. Going. Go. Go. Good girl. Go. Way to fight. Good girl. Way to fight. Up and out. Up and out. Huh? Up and out. Come on. All transfer oh, spirits go right now. That's fine. Go right now. Go right now. Go. We turn this mic off. Okay, right Streamers, keep going in the name of Jesus. Keep fighting. Fight the good fight of faith. War the good warfare. The victory is ours according to the word of God. In Jesus' name.